YouTube is it going? The Goat House is back with what to watch and what to expect when it comes to the Cleveland Browns in 2024, a team that made the playoffs even while being extremely beat up last year. So what does it mean for this year? What happens if they stay fully healthy? Have some questions for them as well. Uh, can't wait to break it down. We uh, have done this for a lot of NFL teams. There's a playlist on the channel. Check it out. Team that is the first to reach two comments on this video will be the team I do next for this series. Uh, the Browns, top three things to watch. Again, got some questions. Can they fix those away game struggles, the, the struggles on the road like they did last year? They weren't maybe, – maybe they weren't the worst team on the road last year, but when you compare each team, how they were home – and how they were away, the Browns definitely had the most absurd difference. Completely different team. And I know they dealt with injuries and going from one week to the next without certain guys. Probably played a part, but they were a completely different team. Uh, the defense looked elite at home. Did not look very, you know, it looked below average or around average at times away. Um, in the offense, it was a difference as well. But I thought it was very odd. So do they kind of, do they figure that out? Uh, you know, they have some tough road games obviously this year, but... Uh, did injuries play a big part of that? So that's something that's like really something to watch because they had a ridiculous, like I said, a ridiculous difference. Like they were, it was not the same team. Like most other teams, it's like you could tell it's the same team. Like, yeah, they don't have the home crowd advantage, the home field advantage. They're sometimes a little more rested, feel a little more rested. They don't have to deal with traveling, but it was the same team out there for the Browns. It did not seem the case. So I thought that was odd. And I mean, factoring that, that that ha occurred and then the injuries and they still made the playoffs is quite impressive, quite impressive. Um, so the big question is, will they stay healthy as well? Durability. They're one of those teams with some durability concerns, especially at the top, which at the top, you know, the most important player in Deshaun Watson. We'll talk about that a little bit, but I will say, I think sometimes people, not just with the Browns, but a lot of teams every year, they go, well, they did this last year and they were, they, you know, they made the playoffs last year and they were hurt. So this year they're better going into the year. So, they're going to finish better. Not necessarily how it works. Of course, they should be a better team, but it's a different season, different games, different things happen. Other teams got better or worse. So um, if they did end up with a better season this year than last year, the reason wouldn't be because they were injured last year and they were healthy this year uh, necessarily. Obviously, that plays a part, but so many different factors in that. So I don't really like to think that way. I've learned that over the past that the explanation of, well, because last year this happened, that means this year this will happen. It doesn't really work like that. But um, but bottom line is they're healthy right now going into the year, besides Nick Chubb maybe. Uh, you know, so they are they are a better regard. Even if they if they're healthy and for whatever reason have a bad record at the start of the year or whatever and they're but they're healthy, they are still a better team than how they finished last year's because who is out there. Uh, but you know, random things happen sometimes, so we'll, we'll see. Uh, number two, uh, the defense to me is way too talented to be predictable, and that was kind of their only flaw last year. I shouldn't say only. I mean, oh, yeah, only flaw. I think flaw would be a too strong of a word to talk about uh, maybe the interior defensive line situation because it did get better last year bringing Delvin Thompson in. They had some other guys that stepped up. They added a little bit more uh, looking at this offseason Um you know, so that could help it, but I wouldn't really say it was a flaw last year. It was a flaw, maybe the year before and the and the year before that. Uh, but really, the only flaw to me was, uh, you know, besides being injured, I should say, is they they did get a little predictable on defense. As good as that defense was, you know, Jim Schwartz coming in and helping, he specializes. It feels like in stopping the run, the interior of the defense, coaching interior defense line and linebackers saw it in Tennessee, and that was a big issue for the Browns. So. That was a pretty good hire for that reason, and he is a good defensive mind, uh, and he had the defense looking elite at times. It really looked elite at times. A lot of those games were home. I think all of the times they looked elite were at home. They were dominant there, but a ton of man coverage, and I say it all the time. Like I mean, everyone knows it too. You have to, you have to be able to mix it up. You have to be versatile. You have to be, um, you have to be able to do multiple things there out there, and uh, you know they. They played very well in, in their heavy man coverage scheme, but it started to get predictable as the year went on. Teams started to, the good teams started to figure it out. They get in the playoffs, and in the playoffs, it's all about the game plan. And a lot of time, it, you come away thinking defensive play calling, defensive coaching is actually more important than the players out there. I mean, the Chiefs are a good example of that. They've obviously had really good players, but it's more than just having really good players. If you look at the offensive side of the ball, I, I think quarterback play, offensive line play, 
uh, are at the very top, and then play calling not too far after. But I've noticed that in the massive, massive, big games, the winner go home type games as well. Defensive coaching and play calling is huge, and I and overall Jim Schwartz did a good job. I think the Browns took a step up. At times they looked elite. The defense was solid. They do have really good players. Uh, but I, I do think it, based on last year, his defense got predictable. But we see it time and time again every year in the NFL or over the years in the NFL, and some coaches end up adding more or tweaking things and switching things. And some coaches stick to their guns, and they're a little too stubborn. Uh, they don't really want to switch it up. you know. So I'm very curious to see how they adjust a little bit. Do, do they add a more variety of coverages, not you know going back-to-back plays and man coverage or just being predictable when teams are game planning for them? Because it's it's such a talented defense. Miles Garrett, one of the best in football. Um, you know, Zadaria Smith obviously could, still, obviously could still play. They have a couple young pass rushers behind those guys, of course. They got better on the D-line. They got better adding Dalvin Thompson last year, but they've gotten better at multiple guys. Hall from Ohio State, who I really like. I don't think we'll see him on every down because he's more of a – uh, pass rush specialist from the inside. Maybe he wants to put on a little more size. Um, linebackers, Jeremiah Wusu karamoa really took off last year. They had Jordan Hicks, who's pretty consistent as long as he's healthy. Uh, they had Bush, see if they can get more out of him. Second, we know the secondary is strong. A little, you know, a little bit about saying healthy there. Um, and then going back to the health, looking at running back position and the quarterback position, a big one with the offensive lineman. They've got a really good offensive line. It's just been a little beat up here and there, but done such a good job drafting you know adding Dewan Jones last year as well but the main point of that was the defense can be elite it's too talented to be predictable in the massive massive game so I'm watching out for that do they does Jim Schwartz you know add more does he does he get a little more creative I think he he should and I probably probably will number one the big question which Deshaun Watson do we get I can see multiple different scenarios um, you know I can see you know, just a solid quarterback. I can see, you know, he's had, he had struggles last year. Um, he is a factor though, when he's out there, even when he struggled, he is still a big time factor because he can make big plays. He can extend plays. So even when those games, he had like a bad interception or an ugly one or a couple of them, like he still is a major factor. You have to fear him if you're on the other, any other, if you're on the other side of the ball. Um, so he's still making an impact, but does he, is he still trying to find his way? Is he still trying to bounce back from injury? Is he solid? Does he go back to did any elite quarterback to Sean Watson? Or did anyone call him elite? Was he borderline? Was he great? I could I could see that as well because he's still, you know, he's not old. He's not washed up. He's got a good team. Um, he was still trying to get back into things, and it makes sense. You know, like he still get, was still getting back into things, and he kind of got disrupted. So does he kind of get back into things and kick into gear? This year, I can see all of those scenarios. I can see an elite Deshaun Watson. I can see a great. I can see a good. Uh, I can see uh, maybe a little bit below good. I don't really see a bad Deshaun Watson. I still think there's too much talent. I, I don't. I, people that say he was bad last year, I think that's – uh, the wrong choice of words. I think it would maybe disappointed or underwhelming in those games he played. But remember, he was trying to get back from a lot of time off, uh, you know, and dealing with injuries, p- trying to play through injuries. So, um, legit, I think a legitimate excuse. Uh, and then, and in terms of health, yeah, do we get a healthy Deshaun Watson? Do we, do we, uh, not? Is it up and down, you know, kind of like last year? It's like he's back and then, oh, wait, no, he's still dealing with something. So there's so many different scenarios here. And what do we get? And ultimately, that could decide. Their season, like they need him in the playoff game. Um, you know, Joe Flacco played great in the end of the regular season, but obviously not going to be able to do much in the playoff game there. Um, and it's a guy that's just so much more of a factor because the big playability, how he can he can buy time, he can extend plays, he can he can run if he needs to. He had some good moments running, like crucial moments, like right away last season. So, you know, lowering his shoulder against someone too, but that it could get him hurt. So that's the only thing there, but. This ultimately will decide because it's a really good roster. It's a really good roster. Coaching staff stepped it up last year. Offensive line's good. I guess I guess health will be a factor. Receivers look good, led by Amari Cooper. Joku's really taken off, being a little more consistent, maybe kind of making his way towards, you know, a legit tight NFL tight end. Defensively, we talked about they have talent everywhere. Um, so there are more questions than just Deshaun Watson, like we talked about, but that is the big one there because this roster is very good. Uh, players to watch, going to go Grant Delpit. Grant Delpit was like star at LSU, but you kind of worried about tackling with him in thin frame. And then early, like very, it's still early in his career, but very early in his career, it's like, eh, maybe not that star we thought, you know, he, or we, that he was at LSU. But this past year, he took off. He looked like, 
I say through the first quarter or so of the season, he looked like one of the very, very best safeties in football. Like you can debate at that early part of the season, he was the best. You can definitely debate it. And then he was kind of, and he continued to play well, but then he kind of dealt with some uh, an injury there, and that really kind of threw things off. So first year in Jim Schwartz defense was looking really, really good. Injury kind of threw things off. So how is he in year two? If he can stay healthy, if he can you know stick in there and it doesn't affect him, he's not affected by the past injuries or whatever, he could be really, really good. Maybe not enough people are talking about that. So a player I'm really excited for. So could that prime LSU Grant Delpit be on display very possible, very possible. Like I said, maybe not being talked about a ton. Uh, Jerry Judy, trade for Jerry Judy, who was supposed to be a star receiver. He was a star a star player at Alabama. You know, was is supposed to be, you know, he, really the way people talked about him, the what he was in college. Like he's supposed to be like Justin Jefferson type player, like range, uh, CD Lamb. You know, guys like this, and he just has not been there. Like not at all. Had some disappointing moment, but had some very disappointing quarterbacks throughout his career, just been a little underwhelming. But a guy that is a home run hitter, can run routes, has the athleticism, you know, he can play inside and out. Uh, you know, I, we're gonna have, I think they're going to have some fun with that. They're going to have Mari Cooper outside. They could have Judy on the outside and the opposite side. Uh, they could have Elijah Moore, who's strictly a slot receiver in the slot. Or he can have plays with, um, you know, Judy in the slot. I mean, Moore on the sideline. Uh, Cooper will be out there, obviously, and kind of get creative with tight ends as well. So I, I think Judy is kind of that that moving piece maybe that unique piece of that uh not the best because cooper is but of that group there and i do think he could uh maybe figure things out and kind of turn the corner in his career here and get you know, he's he's a still like he's been a good receiver still for the most part he's been a little underwhelming so player i'm really excited to watch i just need a new place to be um so that one should be fun. And we kind of already talked about Deshaun Watson being one. I pretty much touched on everything we need to touch on. Just so many different scenarios with Deshaun Watson. Like with health, but with talent as well. I could see a great Deshaun Watson. I could see a good. I could see a decent at best. Uh, it'll decide a lot because they need him in that playoff game. Last year, the roster is super, super talented. And they uh, got big plans. You know, Stefanski kind of added to his playbook You know, with Deshaun Watson being in there. And I love that because he, him... Stefanski, even when he had that playbook in Minnesota, even going back to there, it felt like a kind of strict, stubborn, um, just classic West Coast style offense. There's not a whole lot of uniqueness, you know, to it. And he would have some trick plays when he came into Cleveland the first year. He had a lot of trick plays up his sleeve. But in terms of, you know, minus the trick plays, there's not a whole lot going on besides that old school run the football, you know, outside zone West West Coast style offense. But I think adding Watson's like, okay. Stefanski's like, I'm going to add more. We're going to get more creative. We got to take that turn. We got to be unique to be a big time football team. Um, and I think he was doing that. So now we want to, we want to see that in full gear right now. So a uh, big reason why, uh, well, how Watson, what will his, what he does will decide if he stays healthy, we'll decide a lot of things. Um, but if he's, I, I, to me, he's just got to be out there. That's really the, cause even if he doesn't, it's going to be disappointing to everyone if he doesn't get back or even that close to the Texans, Deshaun Watson, which was borderline elite. Some people may say elite. Some people may say definitely not, but pretty damn great. Pretty damn good. Uh, but he doesn't really need to get back there. I mean, to win a Super Bowl, maybe close, but uh, because he's just a factor. Like I said in the beginning part, uh, beginning part of this video, he is a factor. Just being out there, that presence that he is, because there is so much to his game. Uh, games to watch. I really like the Jaguars game in week two in Jacksonville. How will the Browns be away? Uh, I think it's a really good a good game. I could even match up to me. Uh, two quarterbacks that we know have so much talent in them, so much more talent in them, but they've been a little disappointing. Um, you know, they both can they can throw the ball, they can run the ball. Uh, both play should play. I think the Jags defense will be a lot better than people think this year, so both should play some tough defense. Um, could go either way. I think those two teams will be fight. They could be fighting. They, we could fast forward to the end of the year, and one of those teams makes the playoffs, and one doesn't. We could look back at that game. I really do. Uh, at the Eagles in Week Six, two teams that really value offensive line got really good offensive lines if they're healthy. They're pretty good, even if they're a little beat up. Uh, they really value just out physicaling. Uh, you know, being more physical than their opponent, and just pounding the football. Um, you know, so I, I think pretty and in really good solid defenses as well on paper at least. Um, so I think it's a pretty even matchup. And I like the way if the Browns are healthy, I like the way they match up against the Chiefs at home in Week 15. That could be a big game for playoffs. I like the way they match up with the Chiefs. I, I think to beat the Chiefs, the Chiefs defense was outstanding last year. Uh, big reason why they won the Super Bowl. 
I mean, the biggest reason is Patrick Mahomes, but in the rest of that group, but the defense doesn't get enough credit. Uh, but to to beat that defense, I think you kind of stick to the to the ground. You kind of it's not you're not going to torch them doing that. They've gotten better at that over the years. But uh, the Browns, uh, I think, kind of have the formula to do that, and you have to have a strong secondary. Uh, and pass rush against the Chiefs, and uh, the the Browns have a pretty complete, if healthy, secondary, and they have Miles Garrett up front and more. So I do think they match up well if they're healthy. I said that a couple years ago, uh, two years ago, actually, the way the Browns roster was shaping and adding Deshaun Watson. I'm like, the team that matches up against the Chiefs like in the playoffs, like if they seem in the playoffs the best, could, it, debatable, I didn't say it was a fact, could be the Browns if they are fully healthy. So I'm going to stick with that. We, we've seen the Bengals match up with them pretty well. Um the Bills played them well, even though being depleted last year. I'm kind of getting off topic here, but uh, I, the point is, I think the Browns uh, could match up well against them. Not like they they have them overmatched or anything like that, but could, could see it there. Uh, and then fans takes uh, Cam Sullivan offensive health. I think the whole team, but you good point. But I do think the whole team. Looking at Grant Delpit, looking at Greg Newsom, um, you know some of the, the defensive backs in there. Um, Jordan Hicks had a weird. It kind of was a fluky injury last year. He was playing great football for the Vikings last year. Um, so looking at those guys, Watson level of play, does he return to form? Will time off the field and injuries hold him back? There's just so many different questions there. Does We talked about it, but it's like there's so many different scenarios that could stem from so many different things, like like Cam mentioned here. Like is it because of time off or is it because of injuries or is it because yeah, he's just still trying to learn a new offense? Is it because – he was only that talented because he perfectly fit the Texans' offense and he wasn't injured. Like, there's probably not that, but there's so many different scenarios here. So, what are we going to get from Deshaun Watson? Receiver play behind Cooper. Does Judy thrive on the new team? I think he plays better. He does need to catch the ball uh, downfield a little bit better than he has. Um, I say a little more consistently, not that he's been awful in that category. Um, Elijah Moore, I could see him take. I could see him taking another step up as well. Um, you know, so we'll see. Cooper was outstanding last year. He's got to stay healthy as well. Uh, take, despite having a top defense, they will finish eight, nine and last in, in their division. So, um, maybe some would think that's a little bold. Uh, it could be in the ballpark. Um, tough schedule. Do, uh, do they get better away? How beat up will they be? What Watson will we get? Are they predictable on defense? Like, there's so many questions here. They probably, if we're a true range, we probably can see anywhere from, we'll say eight to, I, you know, if I would tighten it up a little bit, I, I think nine to 11 wins somewhere r- around there. If I were to tighten it up at like eight to 12 wins, they really should fall in that range. But um, he's thinking kind of there at their floor, not saying that's my prediction at all, but I, there's reasons that could lead to that. I think people do look too much into, well, hey, we were super beat up and we had Joe Flacco. We made the playoffs. So this year, and I understand the thinking. This like now we have Watson. He's got more time to learn this offense. We added Jerry Judy. We got, you know, second year under Schwartz. Um, people are getting healthy. Like we're gonna be better. And that's actually true. They are better. Technically, they are better because there are better players out there, but then you break down there every year. There's teams that are better, but they have a worse record or they're worse. And they somehow have a better rec- record because just especially early in the season, fluky random things happen. And that, you know, those games count towards your record. Other teams get injured that weren't injured last year. Other teams are healthy that weren't healthy last year. This team got better. This team got worse. There's so many different factors where you cannot say our record will be better or our finish our spot. Our seed will be better because of what happened last year. For anybody, not just the Brown, does not apply. But I think it will. It is. You are better. They are better than at, they were at the end of last year. They're in better shape. So I do agree with that. But that doesn't mean their record or seeding will actually be better because there are other teams in the NFL. Um. So yeah, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, with them. Uh, Adam is Deshaun Watson washed? I definitely wouldn't say washed. I, I just is he what he was in the, in Houston? There's a good chance. There's a decent chance. Maybe he isn't fully that guy. Um, how many bad games would it take for Watson to be benched from Winston? I don't see it happening. Like I, I, I think you would have to be either like playing injured and playing and playing bad, or if he wasn't playing injured, you know, it would, he would have to be horrendous. Like it'd have to be awful, like really bad. Um, I don't think he was quite, and somebody else said that too. Watson trying to top right while, uh, 
Watson will be a top five quarterback this year. That's a little bold, but I've gone back and rewatched the season. Sean Watson wasn't a, Watson wasn't as bad as people say. So yeah, I saw I knew somebody said that. I agree with that for the most part. Uh, I'm not really counting on him being top five, but he did have some of his interceptions were ugly. Like like it was like right to the like what was you staring down the defense right to him, and you don't want to see that. And if those things happen, do they really ever go away? Could argue maybe not, but. Um, he if you watch the whole game, like he, some of these games, like the, he was much more of a factor, much more of a presence. I talked about that than people realize. Um, like there was a there was a game early where he had like a fifty something percentage percentage completion percentage. I just said percentage too many times, but uh, and that is kind of viewed as bad. It, like the, the and then you look at the numbers, like the numbers overall weren't that great. Um, it was one of the first games. I actually can't remember. Usually I remember these things, but, um, but if you actually watch the game, he was a massive reason why they won the game. Like he actually played very well. Um, I, I was ranking week by week for our Twitter subscribers, uh, court top 10 quarterbacks, power rankings update. And he started pretty high because I thought he was uh, out there doing things, big things for his team. So I would agree with that, that he wasn't as bad. The really bad moments are as bad, were as bad as you think. But I think people will take that and think he was very bad, and I think that's misleading. I think that's inaccurate. Uh, back to Adam here. Well, we can uh, we can finish on Watson Tron. Uh, obviously, he's better than Flacco. The offense didn't fit. Yeah, um, obviously, yeah. Watt, they'll be better with Watson than Flacco, and they would have been in the playoffs. Uh, and then he had some prediction on some numbers. So you can take a look at those. But back to Adam. Uh, yeah, I just don't see Watson being benched. They need him out there. What will Nick Chubb's room for rotation look like? I think it'll be a mere split than more of a split than people expect. Uh, mm, yeah, I could, that's a good question too. If, if Chubb is back and fully healthy, well, definitely early, like they're going to ease him back into it. Uh, but let's say we're like in season halfway or three quarters, whatever, through the season, Nick Chubb's fully healthy. One of the very best running backs in football. He's much better than Jerome Ford, um, even post injury. Uh, Jerome Ford solid. He looked pretty good, you know, you know, last year when he was, when he he had a big role. But Nick Chubb's just a lot better. Um, but that situation, what do they do? Do they use their best running back? We said the year before, the fancy like wasn't using Chubb enough, so I could see him doing that. So it actually is a really good question. Um, uh, you know, definitely gonna split. Right when Chubb comes back, I'd imagine Ford actually gets more. Like, right when Chubb's ready, but I could be wrong there. Uh, but once you're deep in the season, I uh, think they go more and more Chubb there. Um, better game plan for the defense. Yeah, I kind of touched on that. Like, better, more of a, uh, yeah, is that more of a pregame thing or, or like, planning thing? Or is that more of a in the situation, in the moment, you know, having to go away from you, what you know best, you know, in this case, Jim Schwartz, a lot of man coverage, not all man coverage, but a lot of it, um, you know, does, does he uh, do a better job with mixing it up or does he save something for the playoffs? You know, a lot of factors there. And then there's a take there. He has Browns finishing 9-8, and eight, so just one more win than Cam Sullivan. Um, some Watson uh, stats, which is a good, decent amount of touchdowns, but maybe too many interceptions. Chubb has... Worst year, career year. I guess that's possible depending on when he comes back. Judy comes a non-factor. So not a lot of faith here, even though he did have him going above 500. Uh, coaching keeps the team above 500 is what he says. So he likes the coaching. Uh, Josh is a Browns fan. I think Deshaun Watson is going to cost us. So kind of the opposite. Two Browns fans here. Watson, Tron, big time believer in Deshaun Watson. Um Maybe maybe a little too optimistic. You know, top five is a little tough, but I do agree uh, that he wasn't nearly as bad as people think. He, I do think he needs to be out there very good, more of a presence than people think. Uh, but and then Josh here, Browns fan, is kind of the opposite. Could or he's gonna cost us what could be a Super Bowl roster. It is a very good roster. The Browns have one of the best rosters in the league. But Deshaun Watson is so bad that it won't matter. I wouldn't say he's so bad. Um, but if he just can't get right, or if he's not, some people kind of doubt him being fully invested or fully motivated, if you will, I, I guess that could be a big time issue as well. I, th- I think I- I'm not really super worried about that part, but we'll see. Then Richie, besides Deshaun, this was a good question. Who is the most important role in the Browns becoming st- for them to become like a Super Bowl bound team this year? Like we, t- we talked about in this video, like it's going to come down to Watson, like being healthy or being, you know, somewhat right, even if he is healthy. Uh, 
who has the most important role. I mean, if you're talking about, yeah, I think he's a player, but you do you do have to talk about the offensive line, of course, uh, being a, a very important unit and being right and being to – you know, together so they have the chemistry, you know, so healthy out there at the same time as I guess I guess what I'm trying to say. But who has the most important role? I saw this tweet, I thought about it, and I actually want to go with the coaches. I want to, and we kind of touched on that in this video a little bit. I want to go. I talked about Jim Swartz. It's a good defensive mind. He's had a good NFL career. Uh, maybe minus the year that got him fired as a head coach, but he did a really good job in Tennessee. I thought he he helped the Browns take a step up. He does a very good job coaching the interior of defenses. Um, we saw it in Tennessee. We saw it in Cleveland the first year. You know, the interior defense line, the linebackers. Uh, he got more out of a guy like Grant Delbert. So this is a good defensive coach. But, man, it got pretty damn predictable. I talked about it. He has to add more. He has to – if he doesn't think his players can do more, I think he's wrong. I think he's – I don't think he thinks that. But I, I usually when teams kind of are predictable and they stick to certain things and, you know, they don't mix it up, they usually don't believe they have the players to mix it up because it's very difficult, specifically for – corners and anybody in coverage but corners running different coverages like play for play like they go man they go cover three they go cover two back to man uh trap coverages different alignments you know it's difficult those are it's a difficult difficult job corner is very difficult to play specifically um and that's part of the reason um but and it's a lot of the time when teams don't when you see teams not mixing up and you're pissed off at your team like they're not mixing up the coverages on defense it's 90 percent of the time at least because they don't believe they don't they don't have the players that really fit being able to do that and that can't be the case with the browns they're too talented um so it's going to come down to him mixing it up him doing his thing you know being a defensive coach but mixing up a little bit more the players being able to mix it up a little bit more um so if we want to highlight players there not a lot not a lot of pressure on miles Garrett. like miles Garrett, he's going to get a lot he's going to get the job done but i look at the corners I look at them staying healthy and then be Denzel Ward being the best, one of the best corners of football like he should be. Um, you know, and uh, Emerson's been looking pretty good and Newsom is solid when he's on the field as well. So those guys just doing their job and being able to mix it up and be equally effective. And I look at offense coach, their head coach, Kevin Stefanski, who he's kind of had a hot and cold run here, even going back to Minnesota. Um, you know, they played well under him, but the predictable play con, then he goes to Cleveland first year looks good. He's adding a little bit more, a little trickery, um, really good. They went kind of downhill from there and everyone's like, it's so predictable. It's so stale. It's like, it's just, it's his system that you got to run to open up the play action pass. And he's not giving the ball to Chubb enough. And it's just not, it's just stale. It's not there. He, you know, he's trying to control too much and sometimes that's what I always said about those West Coast style offenses like the team runs through him rather than more than the quarterback but then I thought he did a really good job last year given what he had and adding a little bit more it felt like um to his system it wasn't like a strict this is the system that's what I thought that's kind of my feeling was it like for the future with Deshaun Watson um did a good job with Flacco in there so does the fancy kind of continue that he again had kind of up and down so I think that's kind of most important here um, Stefanski and Schwartz, the the two uh, the two most important coaches on this roster here, I, that'll decide a lot. So that to answer the question, if I have to pick a player, you know, Miles Garrett's the best player, but I want to say offensive lineman. But you're as good as your unit typically. Um, like if I had, it's tough. If I had to pick a player, who's the most important? Uh, Mari Cooper, maybe when he was on, like it was a big factor. When he's healthy, it's a big factor. Um, again, you look at those corners. Uh, JOK uh, stepping up at linebacker last year, tackle for lost machine, like really helped that team. Does he continue on from that? So, um, yeah. So a lot, a lot of important factors here, not just Sean Watson, even though that is the main talking point here. Uh, but that'll wrap it up for this one. Uh, team that gets the gets two comments the fastest will decide the next video. So make sure to comment. We'll see who wins that race. Check out the playlist on our channel with the teams that we have done. A lot more content to come before the season. We're kind of getting there, man. The preseason, the Hall of Fame game is not too far away, so I'm excited about it. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.